angles, which is more challenging. We've already done it. <clears throat> We've practiced it. It's the same concept as measuring the segments. What we're building up to is that if you have a part of a segment and another part of a segment and you add them together, then you have the whole thing, right? So it's the same concept as the part plus part equals whole from the angles yesterday, same thing. Um, we do need to at first though kind of learn what is a segment, how do you name it, um, how do you write it, what does it mean if you have congruent segments, what does it mean if you have a segment bisector, um, so that's what the front of the paper is for. <clears throat> Looking at the top, uh, it says use the diagram below to determine the distance between each set of locations. Each set of locations. So they're saying to you, like if this was a map, for instance, and this house was at zero and you measured to this tent and it was six, you would use the scale factor which is right here saying that one unit of measurement is equivalent to one mile, then the question is saying, so how much distance is between the two pictures on the map in terms of miles? Okay. Huh? Uh, you don't have to highlight it. That was just me saying that's how you answer the question. So the first one's not bad because it starts at zero and it goes to six, right? So that's six units, which would equivalent, be equivalent to how many miles? Six miles. Do y'all understand that? It's saying that if it's every, for every unit, it's one mile. This is from zero to six. So how many units is that? Counting wise, that's six units. So in terms of miles, that would be six miles. I would like you to get up, go to a neighbor, and answer the next two. You're just answering it right next to it. Get up, go to a neighbor, and answer the next two. So if we had a map and we had the biker um, at unit one and the swimmer at unit 12, what would the distance between them be? How many units would be between them? 11 units. So how many miles is between them? 11 miles. Because it's at the one and it's counting to the 12, so that's 11 units of space between, Mason width. All right. Now we have a biker to the tent. Now, for whatever reason, this one is negative four, and then this one's one. So how much space is between them? Five. Five. Because this is, if it, if it helps you, think of zero. This is negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four. There's zero, and there's one. So in terms of units, it's five units, which means it's five miles. Um, all of our answers are what type of number? All of our answers, if we're talking about the distance between two things, all of our answers would be what type of number? You're, you're close. Whole number would imply that it's a pretty number, right? Yeah. Um, what if I, instead of walking a full mile, I only walked half a mile? That's allowed, right? Yes. But this stop. Right? Okay, so let's think again. If I'm talking about distance, there's a, there's a natural order to your answer. Like, what type of number will always be the answer if we're talking about distance? Y'all can get this, I have faith in you. Just guess. Okay. If I were asking a distance question, how far? Or how like how far between? How far to? How far did they travel? What type of number is always the answer? Not the number what? Positive. 
Awesome. Really? I'm sorry. Oh. oh, you're going to somewhere. Right? We're talking about distance. <laughs> the answer is always some type of positive number, right? Because you cannot travel negative distance. Yeah, it's not possible. Well, if you go somewhere and then go back a certain amount, but you're still progressing forward, even though your route is backtracking. You're still progressing. You're still traveling. Like your watch. Oh, you're adding to yes. it. Yes. Like if you think of in terms of steps taken, like your watch has an algorithm. Algorithm means like a formula. Your watch actually doesn't know how many steps you take. But based on the movement of the watch, there, the algorithm is translating your movement to, oh, that's a step. Oh, that's a step. That's a step. You know what I mean? Um, and so, what type of number is always the number of steps you take? Positive. Even if you said, oh man, I've got to go get that. i got to go back. Your, your watch doesn't all of a sudden start clicking negative steps. It's still saying you're making positive steps. So, um, okay, now let's move on. What is distance? We're not highlighting this because distance, you should already know it. It's not a new vocab word. I want to highlight new stuff. Distance is the absolute value of the difference between points. When we say absolute value, I'm going to underline it because it probably intimidates you a little bit. And then I'm going to add right here in parentheses, always, and I'm drawing a plus sign, always positive. I'm proud of you for getting it. Now, we've already learned segment, but we're going to refresh you real quick. Naming versus the segment length. So for instance, here's an example of a segment. What would we call this? Segment what? AB or you could call it BA. Either one. And then above it you would draw that little segment notation. Now next it says length. So I need you to understand that if I told you that from A to B measures X plus 4, meaning we don't know the actual measurement, we just know the expression for it, right? Then I said, what is the length of it? You would say it's X plus 4. Sometimes we know the number. Sometimes we have a polynomial expression. It's just like yesterday with angles. Sometimes we know the angle measure. Sometimes we have a polynomial expression instead. Okay? But it still represents the length from A to B is X plus 4. We just don't know what X is. All right, looking at the next um, section. This is to just help you wrap your mind around counting units. Um, this is not necessarily grade level standards. This is helping you with that visual of stuff you learned in middle school. So if you look at this, we have a standard number line here, right? And then we have point B, T, and R on the number line at specific spots. Think of a ruler. The ruler goes negative as well. I want you to tell me, notice it says RT equals. This means you're telling me the length of from R to T. So find R, now find T, doesn't matter, remember segments can be read forward or backwards. Yeah, great question, he said wouldn't that go backwards? Um, and it doesn't matter, even though T comes first in terms of looking at the number line, it doesn't matter. So you're going to start at R and you're going to count to T, and what do you get? Okay, we 
Don't forget our recording, so it kind of looks like, <laughs> kind of looks like first block is struggling um, in here. Anyways, all right. <laughs> so you should have counted five. Um, we could look at it and say to ourselves, it's seven minus two. Those are absolute value bars. An absolute value of five is five. All right, I would like you to find the length of VR and VT right now. And you don't have to use absolute value bars if you don't want to. You can just count it. Two equal parts. All right? 
I need you to think bisect means cut in half. You with me? Bisect means cut in half. It's cutting it in half. In two. No. Bisect is like sinus. And you're cutting into something to learn about the inner pieces. Bisect is cutting in half. Oh. All right, so if, let's write a definition. Now, it doesn't have to be a segment that's bisecting. It's just that what got cut in half, the segment WY. What cut it in half? The line XZ. You see the difference here? So there's two things going on here. So it can be a line, right? Or segment that cuts a segment in half. And in, after half, I'm putting parentheses and I'm writing two congruent parts. Because that's the big takeaway here is knowing that when it's bisected, it's just been cut into two equal parts. <clears throat> so if I told you that line WZ, we'll draw arrows above it, bisects segment WY, If I said line WZ is bisecting segment WY, you would need to go to the picture and take note that it just bisected it. How do you do that? Bisect means it cuts it in half. Find the segment that's been cut in half. That would be WY. It's saying it right here. It's bisecting WY. So WY is cut in half. So let's put congruent marks to show, ooh, it got cut in half. Notice I did two tick marks this time. I just wanted you to see that that is possible. Yes? I wrote W. It should have been an X, didn't it? Yeah. Thank you for catching that. You get, a, you get a tiger buck for catching it, paying attention, and having the confidence to say, Miss Holcomb. Welcome. That was definitely not a WZ. Okie dokie. Thank you. Look, y'all, I just work here. You're right. WZ is WZ would be like that, and it's definitely not on that screen. So thank you. It's super embarrassing. Oh my gosh. I think she wants another one. Actually, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's just shows y'all I'm it's human. Free That's free. why we write in pencil. All right, let's go to the back and let's practice. The first six questions, no, four through eight. I'm bored. Yeah, four through eight. Where was one through three? Um. <laughs> oh, right here. It was right here. Okay, that was bothering me. All right, so go to the back. We got four through eight. All of these um, across the top, the first three, are just numbers. No variables, just numbers. So for instance, look at this picture right here. We have segment AB, we have segment CD. Notice this 12 is floating next to segment AB. That means it's 12 units long. Notice the congruent mark here and here. Well, that would mean segment CD is what? Is also 12. Okay, look at number five. The entire segment is LP. <clears throat> Have you noticed that the symbol for segment is no longer showing up above the letters? Like right here, it says LM, but there's no segment. You notice that? That's okay with it being a segment. LM, when it's written like that, that means they're asking you to find the length of it. Okay, 
So from L to M measures what? And from L to P measures what? So your clues are this 7, which is conveniently only next to M to P, but it has a congruent mark to show that it's also here. So what would this be? 7. So what is L to M? You have to look at your picture carefully. And then what is L to P? L to P. 14. All right, you try six. If you don't have a calculator, it would be a good time to go get it because now we're getting to those numbers. Z. But if you look at the picture, X to Y and Y to Z have congruent marks. So whatever answer we find for one of them matches the other one because they're equal. Now our clue is 37. Notice 37 stretches from X all the way to Z. All the way. So that implies that the entire thing is 37 and we need the two halves. So what do we do? Divide it in half. What do you get? Yep. All right, let's level it up a little bit. Those are all just plain numbers. Now we need to get to grade level difficulty. And that would be numbers seven and eight. Because now we have polynomials instead of just numbers. So look at seven. It's the same concept. It's just now instead of numbers, they're polynomial expressions, which means you have to set up an equation. Your equation comes from looking at the picture, reading the clues, and asking yourself, do I have two things equal? Do I have something adding up to equal the whole? Do I need to take something and cut it in half? So look at number seven. <coughs> I want you right now to put a question mark on the goal in seven. The goal says find what? Okay, go to DE and I want you to put a question mark. A lot of times people will look at math problems and then they'll look at me and they'll say, Ms. Holcomb, I don't even know where to start. And the first thing I'm going to say to you is have you taken any notes on the picture? What I mean by taking notes is, have you put a question mark where the goal is? Have you labeled anything not labeled? Okay, I'm going to keep picking. So can you put the lid on that highlighter? Wait, I'm going to lose it. I didn't lose it. Mason. <laughs> what did I do? How did Mason do it? He's all the way over there. So I'm going to put my question mark where it asks for we need to find DE, so I know that in the long run, I need to be able to say the measurement of DE. Well, in order to say the measurement of DE, I need to know what X is. Now I need to look at the picture and say, what is my relationship? My clue is the congruent marks on those segments. That's telling me that 5X plus 9 is equal to 3x plus 17. They're telling you that they're equal. And now again, you can see that unit one solving multi-step equations. Um, I always start with a variable when I have one on each side. I'm going to move 3x by subtraction over here. Then I'm going to move 9 by subtraction to the right. What is that? Um, why am I struggling? It's 8. 
and then I'll divide by two and I've run out of room. Uh, when I divide by two, do you get four? This is saying two times what is eight? The answer is four. It did not ask for X, it asked for D, E. So we got to go back and plug four into the expression for D, E. Right? So you get 29. Uh, 5 times 4 plus 9. Number eight, let's look at it. If JL bisects IK, and JK is this, and IK is this, find IK. You will notice you do have a picture, but it is not labeled entirely. I would like you right now to go to the picture, label the info that give, and put the question mark where it needs to be, and then let's check it with mine. First of all, this, this right here is very important. Why? Well, it's cutting it in half. They're secretly telling you, hey, this picture has two equal parts without actually saying that. They're using the word bisects instead. Now you got to know what got bisected. It's always what follows the word. So it's telling you that Ray JL is cutting IK in half. Find I to K and make notes with congruent marks. I tend to use two sometimes because it just reminds me that those are congruent marks, not like segments. Now I'm going to finish labeling. JK is 9X minus 20. I to J is 6X minus 11 and it asks for I to K. So it's asking for the whole thing, right? See how I did that? Okay, where's our equation come from? Where's our equation come from, y'all? <coughs> you got it. You can do it. Just read the number. Read this stuff to me. And what do I do with those? Set them equal. Set them equal. Right. So if you look at your congruent marks, that's telling you that 6x minus 11 equals 9x minus 20. And that's your equation that you're going to set up and solve. and you get three, right? But it doesn't ask for three, it asks for what? What does it ask me to find? IK. There's two ways to do this. IK is the whole thing. So you could plug 3 into 6x minus 11 and 9x minus 20 and just add those up, right? What's a faster way? You may know. What's another way to find IK without using every single 
number up there. What's the relationship between IJ and JK? Or what? Those, what do those congruent marks mean? They're equal. So do I have to plug X into all of it if they're equal? Can I plug X into... What? You get the same answer. So a faster way to get the whole thing instead of plugging X in twice, do it the one time and double it, right? So you could plug it into just one of them and then double that and you would have your answer. But you don't have to. If you don't see it that way, that's fine. Um, so we're finding I, K. So that would be 6x minus 11. If we plug 3 in for 6, or in for x, we get 6 times 3 minus 11. What do we get? 14. What is 6 times 3 minus 11? 7. And what do we just say we need to do? We need to double the whole thing. And we get what? 14. Okay, we're getting to the segment addition postulate, which is exactly what we did yesterday with the angle addition postulate. Take your highlighter and highlight segment addition postulate. Here's what the postulate says. Part plus part equals whole. The first part is AB. The second part is B, C, what's the whole thing? A, C. Remember when you're writing a segment, you just use two letters. Okay, look at number nine. It says find the length of G, K. From G all the way to K. Yes. G to K is 23. Right? Because you just added two parts. If you need to know how he got 23, please write 8 plus 15. Number 10, a little different, same concept. It says find T to V. T to V is this X right here. This is the goal. Alright, look for your clues. Your clues are the whole thing's 42, and from V to U is 31. How do I find T to V? Very good. T to V is going to be the 42 minus the 31. 11. So sometimes it's it's not part plus part equals whole. Sometimes it's whole minus a part equals the remaining part. Now let's do these bottom three. Number 10. You have the picture, you have info, nothing's labeled. 
please go to the picture in number 10 and label based on what they give you. Label the picture in number 10. Label your picture and then we're going to look at mine and see if it matches. Label your picture in number 10. Okay, you should have labeled O to M, O to M is 15X plus 7. Then you should have labeled M to L is 4X minus 9. And then O to L, since that's the whole thing, it helps to draw this little bar. The whole thing's 36. Then the question just says, what's X? which means set up an equation and solve. Where's our equation coming from? Part plus part equals whole. That's where your equation's coming from. So set it up. We've got 4x minus 9 plus 15x plus 7 equals 36. Set that up, solve it. If you already have 10 done, feel free to do 11 and 12 as well. Label your picture based on what they give you. Alright, I need you to solve that equation. You need to combine like terms before you start moving things. have 19x minus 2, then add the 2, what's 38 by 19? 2. And it only said find x, right? Oh, okay, I know what it is. So, up here, we set things equal because we knew they were congruent. This, it doesn't say anything about them being equal to each other. Um, and there's no congruent marks. So, you have to do the whole part plus part equals whole. So, this part plus this part equals the whole thing. So, my equation is different. Uh, you added Notice I took the two parts, added them together, and I set it equal to the whole thing. So that sometimes is the equation you're going to use. All right, in 11, you should have labeled... This is the exact same um, scenario, right, as 10. So please try that. So this is going to be another part plus part equals whole. Then you're going to solve the equation and get to x. What's 63 divided by 21? 
did you label number 12 like that? And did you put a question mark here? So if we're trying to find the length of AB. First of all, we know the expression for it is 17x minus 4. That means we need to know x. So we're going to set up an equation. We've got part plus part equals whole. Again, the difference here is your expression with the other polynomials now on the other side. But that's okay because our unit one, we practice solving multi step equations. So we first need to um, combine like terms. Now we're going to start moving things to the other side. Right? What's 26 minus 18? What? So x is 1. But it didn't ask for x, it asked for a b. You plug the 1 in right here, and what do you get? Okay, there's two things on here that are a little ahead of where we are, but this is such a good practice sheet. I still want you to, to do this sheet. So let me show you two things on here that you may not know yet, vocab words, um, and help you out with them. First of all, this is page 19. The answer sheet is page 20. If you've got your highlighter, please highlight the word complimentary in box five circle five. You will notice that's a weird spelling. It's not like, oh, your hair looks nice, compliment. It's compliment with an E, like peanut butter compliments jelly. Okay? Popcorn compliments a good movie. Meaning, it's like a yin and a yang. They go together like in harmony, okay? In math, though, now, compliment, and we're going to get here next week or possibly tomorrow. Compliment means the two angles add up to equal 90 degrees. So it means angle plus angle equals 90 degrees. So they're secretly giving you the equation there. They're saying angles A and B are complementary. Okay, that means angle A plus angle B equals 90. There's your part, your part, and your whole. There's one more thing on here you may not know, and that would be this little box here. Or you might know it. Do you know it? Did y'all learn that in middle school or algebra one? Middle school. Good. So then it's just complement that might. All right. So this right here means 90 degrees. Just want to make sure you remember that. Do you know what midpoint means? Point in the middle, right? Look at circle four. Notice it says midpoint. It says X is the midpoint of WY. They have just secretly told you two pieces are equal. Well, where are they? Find WY. X is in the middle which means this is equal to this. Notice those marks I made. That is going to help. Okay? And I think everything else is fine. Oh, yeah, it is. Uh, let me help with 10 just in case. Go to 10. I see two slices of pizza. I see a part and a part, but what's the whole? 
Yes. It's 180. It's what we talked about yesterday. Look here. It's what we talked about yesterday with that protractor. And remember my silly demonstration of stretching one arm and doing a 180? That might have actually been two days ago. Um, but the hole there is 180. All right, so at this point, you're welcome to work. 